I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and disapprove of the music cuts in Mariah Bell's Mamma Mia medley Free Skate. Hey, Claudia. What's up? Hey, Joss. How are you? I'm doing okay. I am living doggy mom life. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Oh, Puppins is so cute. She's so scruffy and adorable. I want to meet her so bad. She's real heckin' cute. Uh, For those of you who did not know, uh, me and my family have just adopted a Jack Russell Terrier slash Westie mix like four days ago. Her name is Mary Puppins, like Mary Poppins but a puppy. <laughs> she's about one and a half years old and she's literally the cutest, sweetest dog. And we are so grateful to have her. <laughs> she's, she's such a calm doggo too. Yeah, she really is. She is just the happiest dog in the entire world. Oh, <laughs> you know, I will also be hella happy when we get to release our new logo that's in the works. I'm getting so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. So... We are super, super stoked about our new logo. We just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, we have been working with an artist. Uh, her Instagram is Desi's Art Vibes, D E Z I S, art, and then the word vibes. Um, and she is so talented and has been working so hard on our logo. We can't wait to reveal it to you guys on Instagram and on Twitter. Speaking of which, <laughs> we've also been working on our social media game. Yeah, it's we've got our first two posts up on Instagram and we've got a few facts about ourselves. It's just pictures of us too, just to introduce us. We promise our entire Instagram will not just be photographs of ourselves. (laughs) Oh, are you sure you want to make that promise? (laughs) No, but also yes. Uh, yeah, and we've been getting such like great support, especially from Edges of Glory. Uh, the skating community has just been so nice about it all. And yeah, we're just excited to make friends and just, yeah, make friends off talking shit about skating. Yeah, it's truly the best. Thanks so much to Edges of Glory who gave us a shout out the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, our first shout out. Mom, I'm famous. And we don't even know you, but like, thanks so much for all the love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so if you guys want please give us a follow on twitter and instagram we are at lutz l-u-t-z get down pod on both platforms yeah all right how about we hop into some news it was a pretty kind of heavy news cycle um i'm gonna start off with a little bit of a lighter tone but not really uh the retirement of vanessa james and morgan cipre uh this isn't really a surprise to many people Vanessa James has had such a great career. We wish her well in whatever she chooses to do next. I'd love to see her in shows and just living it up because she is so great and I I really love her skating. Yeah, I absolutely love her a lot and and I do wish her the best. And yeah, I I don't think this retirement comes as any surprise at all. Period. (laughs) (laughs) Period. Absolutely. Um, I guess the next piece of news that we have to deliver is that, unfortunately, two Grand Prix events have been canceled. Uh, The first one is Skate Canada, which was just coming up in a little bit here. Um, This also kind of comes as not a super surprise. It seems that the COVID cases have been going up in the area where it was going to be held. And also International de France, uh, the Grand Prix event that was going to be held in France, has also been canceled. Yeah, this wasn't too big of a surprise for the French Grand Prix being cancelled. It was a surprise that Skate Canada was cancelled. We mentioned a few episodes ago that the rink in Grenoble, where the Grand Prix was supposed to be held in France, uh, had shut down because of COVID. And we were like, oh, all right, let's see how this plays out. But we kind of knew. So yeah, it doesn't come as much of a shock. But yeah, I just feel really bad for the skaters who were really looking forward to opportunities to compete. Yeah, yeah. I, I truly, truly feel bad. You know, it, it seemed like things were potentially ramping up this season with Skate America and Vegas. I mean, that being said, Vegas has been open to tourists for a while. Um, and that's probably <laughs> due to uh, ahem, ahem, irresponsibility of Americans. But we really? won't go into that right now. Oh my 
Um, also, it was kind of telling that at the uh, Russian test gates, approximately 5% of the folks had their masks all over their nose and mouths if they were wearing masks at all. So, you know, I just kind of encourage everyone to wear masks, wash your hands, follow your county, state, or country guidelines with COVID. Please stay safe and healthy. Yeah. So moving on, we do want to have a trigger warning in place for what's to come. The trigger warning here is for serious, serious allegations of including things like sexual assault, including rape, assault in general. Um, If those are things that you do not want to hear about, you'll definitely want to fast forward through this part of our episode. We just want to be mindful of where everyone is at and give you the opportunity to fast forward if you need to right now. Yeah, so we're going to start by just covering the sexual abuse charge against Richard Gautier. So we're just going to state some facts. Uh, This info is quoted from an article by en24news.com on Friday. So the press revealed that an arrest warrant was filed against the coach, Richard Gautier, at the Montreal courthouse. Uh, The acts with which he is accused allegedly took place during the 1980s. There are three counts that are brought against him, including that of having sexually assaulted a male victim between January 5th, 1983 and April 7th, 1985 in Montreal, and having committed an act of gross indecency between months of April in 81 and 85 against this same person. And the final count is of having attacked the modesty of the victim between April 1981 and January 1983. According to the information uh, that en24news.com got, this victim was one of Gautier's athletes who skated under his authority between the ages of 11 and 19. He was one of Richard Gautier's first students. At that point in time, the coach was 10 years older than the skater and certain events alleged in this case allegedly occurred at the home of the accused. He has been formally suspended by Skate Canada. And yeah, so that's the end of it, really. We don't want to say too much on it, but just give you all the facts. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we wanted to note that 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 quote was taken from the website of en24news.com. There have also been other allegations that have come forth I guess the second set of allegations that we are going to talk about um, were posted on social media by Emma Tang, who is a retired skater who skated at Broadmoor. She competed in individual ladies events. And again, she posted on her social media that she was in contact with some girls and women who had been victims of rape and assault perpetrated by TJ Nyman, and he competed in pairs for the USA. His coach, Delilah Sappenfield, she was also implicated in the accusations. Emma Tang then went on to clarify that she herself was not a victim. However, she spoke directly to and knows the victims personally. And both of us, myself and Claudia, want to make it clear that we stand with, we believe, and we support the victims who have come forth with their experiences, as well as Emma. And we hope that Safe Sport, U.S. Figure Skating, the ISU, really any other governing body and the law uphold appropriate measures and punishments. Absolutely. We give our support and love to all of the survivors. Now, moving on to some easier news. Matteo Rizzo just announced he changed coaches to Lorenzo Magri, who also coaches Daniel Grassel. So there's a lot of people there right now in that camp. So it'll be really interesting to see how those skaters there push each other. But yeah, we'll talk about Matteo later on in the episode about his skates at Nebelhorn. But yeah, that's just a little coaching change from this week. Yeah, I I personally have always had a soft spot for Matteo. I think he just always tries so hard. He always seems like so happy at competitions. So I really do wish him the best. And again, we'll talk about him a little bit later on because he did compete in the Nebelhorn Trophy. We'll talk about a few athletes that competed there. Our next piece of news is actually very joyous and hopeful. Um, Adam Rapon just announced that he will be producing a comedy series at NBC that will center around figure skating. This sounds great and just what 2020 needs. Oh, yeah. I was about to say he has come to save 2020. (laughs) 
Adam Rapon. Leave it to Adam Rapon to save 2020. Please, Adam. You're our only I hope. I know. He's done so well in transitioning out of his competitive career. Like, he's got his choreographer part going. He's got his media stuff going. So, yeah, he's done really well for himself, and I'm proud of him. I love him. So proud of you, Adam. All right, let's get into talking about the competitions. Let's lead it off with Neville Horn Trophy. Now, this is a senior B competition or in the Challenger series. It's one of the few that was not cancelled, but it did take place under pretty strict regulations. That is, there were no crowds there at the competition. Yeah, and I watched a brief interview, if you can call it that. It was literally like 40 seconds of talking to Stefan Lambiel, which who we'll talk about in a second, um, on Instagram. And basically, he was just saying how his athletes just held so much joy to just be skating on competition ice in front of judges again. And they were like, we're just so stoked to be in that competition mindset. He truly seemed really, really happy and, and so caring for his skaters. So it just kind of warmed my heart uh, to see oh, that. that's so wholesome. I know. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's start off with Dennis Vasiliev's. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Stefan. Mini uh, Stefan. Young Stefan. He is mini Stefan. I put that in my notes. I said he's such a mini Stefan. It hurts. <laughs> I literally, I put that in my notes too. <laughs> um, but no, he, he truly, I feel like he's one of those skaters that's just like chronically underappreciated. And I'm glad that, you know, people who are watching this get to experience his glory because I really enjoyed his programs. I did too. So his short program is to Le Grand Tango by Asto Piazzolla. We've had so much Piazzolla over the years, but I really like this program. I think it has great potential, especially in the step sequence. The choreography is very Stefan-esque. I think actually it would most likely be better if Dennis had a bigger crowd to perform to. Obviously, that's very idealistic of us given COVID, but yeah, it, it's just unfortunate that he didn't manage to do a combo for the short, which obviously hurt him in the points. Yeah, I think had he included that combo, he would have placed better than fifth in the short program where he did place. Um, but I think that, you know, some of the highlights of a short program were that he had a really great jump sit spin. And I think just during all of his spins, he had really nice shapes and angles, especially like with his arms and the lines in his arms. I do think that the choreography could use more dynamics, but I think that that's something that evolves over the season, the the choreography sequence. Yeah. I actually made a note as well about his sit-spin variation. I was just like, oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that, that was also a really nice triple axle in his short. Huh. But let's talk about the free skate. We have another Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I... Uh, I actually don't mind this cut of Romeo and Juliet. I found it very kind of like, I didn't really have much of an opinion about it, but it wasn't like one of those, oh no, another Romeo and Juliet. Like I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, but it could also possibly have been because I was extremely distracted by this complex costume oh of God, his. Jess. So <laughs> I'm going to describe it to you. So the base of the costume is black. There is kind of like a silver stripe going down it vertically. But the part that confuses me about this co costume is that it's it's like a tank top <laughs> sleeveless on one side, okay? The other side has a full sleeve, like full long sleeve sleeve. And it's a turtleneck. So I'm like, Dennis, are you cold or are you warm? Are we in the summer wardrobe? Or are we in the winter wardrobe? We need. He to should be skating to Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. <laughs> this is this is truly the correct costume for Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. I I wonder how it ties into Romeo and Juliet. It doesn't. Uh, there, there are also no, it really doesn't. There are also these um, flappy fabric parts near the bottom I, I don't really know what to call it are they ruffles I, I don't think it's quite a ruffle no but we'll, they, we'll just go with flappy bits they kind of just, just like with flappy bits yeah they just flap in the wind a little bit um I, I don't think it's like a terrible costume it's just got a lot I going on I think it's a on. terrible costume <laughs> <laughs> I think it is it, yeah it, 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 like to me it looks more like a swan like duality play than anything Romeo and Juliet yeah I, I think that it's both confusing as a costume 
alone and it's also confusing with the program but um oh yeah like i think this doesn't this cut of romeo and juliet which is by sergey prokofiev isn't as we don't like see it as war horsey because like the most recent romeo and juliets have all been from the uh the new romeo and juliet movie with the polish uh composer abel k i'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce his surname but like it's lovely music but everyone's just been using it as well as the baz lerman music cuts so i mean so the older version of romeo and juliet is getting more love now uh yeah so the one arm sitch in his costume one sleeve uh, i'm not here for it but he did a lovely quad sow. Oh, love the quad sow. I, I literally was like pointing yeah. at my computer screen. I was like, yes, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I know. All of his edge jumps were fine. His toe jumps really weren't working for in this competition. Uh, but overall, the program is all right. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Technically, like in terms of technical content, it's still the beginning of the season and it's a weird season at that. So obviously there's tons of room for him to improve and work on everything. But I think the most Romeo and Juliet-y bit of the entire thing is his hair. It makes him look very Romeo-y. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, I also appreciated the choreographic bits where he appeared as though he was being stabbed in the stomach. Uh, he showed real commitment to that. Staying choreo. true to the story. Real, real commitment. We we love a committed. We love full out. You know, he wasn't marking, so we love a full out boy. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't marking. No, he wasn't. All right, let's talk about Matteo Rizzo. His short program was to Romanza by Andrea Bocelli. My first note was with his music and costume. He was very reminiscent of Josh Farris, in my opinion. Oh, Josh Farris. <laughs> oh, no. I love Josh Farris. I was just like, yes, I love this. Come on, Matteo. But then it was fine. Like, it didn't capture my attention, really. Yeah, but it was okay. I mean, with everything okay. in mind, you know, the coaching change, perhaps not having a lot of ice time, I think it was okay. I, I really enjoy Andrea Bocelli. I also really enjoy Josh Ferris. So these are all potentially <laughs> good combinations of things. And also, like I was saying, I have such a soft spot for Matteo. He just seems like a young, enthusiastic bean, and, and I enjoy him a lot. Yeah, so no wonder he picked from now on from The Greatest Showman for his free skate. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so I, I feel like compared to some of the uh, comments on the internet that I enjoy Greatest Showman programs more than the average viewer. <laughs> okay. I, I really like the soundtrack. I also like the soundtrack remix uh, where they have different artists singing the songs, but that's mm -hmm. that's a total aside. Um, what I don't love about this program, I, I do like this program, don't get me wrong, but what I don't love about this program is that the costume looks like this the meme of what you ordered and what you got in the mail okay so oh it's like God. we ordered uh nathan chen's prince igor costume from the 2016 2017 <laughs> season but unfortunately we ordered it from wish so we got instead the top that mateo is wearing and i i think i know where he's going with it i think he's the ringmaster i just think that it could use a little bit more glitz and and less kind of one note and like I think it, it could be more dynamic the costume oh absolutely like I I found that the costume looked more like a like a European classical European soldier type deal than like greatest showman woohoo so like if you didn't know what he was skating to I reckon you'd be shocked that he was skating to greatest showman because it just doesn't look ring mastery but I appreciate it nonetheless I love that type of suit shirt thing yeah i, I know fashion <laughs> I, I see the effort we yeah, see the we effort see the that effort. he's putting in and yeah. we appreciate it we just kind of wish that there was more dynamic because like if we watch the greatest showman right not only is there zach efron love zendaya also love um but like the costumes and stuff are all very glitzy they're all very glamorous like it's a show and we just want them to have a little more sparkle yeah the costume. speaking of people who were in the greatest showman the movie I know the music like has a build up like I love from now on it's a great track but honestly I totally zoned out at the beginning because it was just Hugh Jackman semi whispering for a good like two minutes 
before the music built up. Yeah, that's it's not my favorite part of it. Uh, I think that they could cut probably like the first 30 seconds differently. It was like a Billie Eilish version of Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah, but Billie Eilish probably like has dynamics in his voice. I'm like, Hugh Jackman is at his best when he's belting that shit out. Uh, nonetheless, like obviously this program has room to improve. Like there were a lot of things to be fine tuned. That's probably why he wanted to change coaches. The jump landings weren't so great. He got you know, really tight on his landings, didn't get the free leg out quick enough. I mean, he's got good air position and all that. I think maybe it's just due to a lack of training from COVID and all of that stuff because Europe's going through another wave of it. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, and, and we know that Italy did get hit really hard by the first wave of COVID. Hopefully this one isn't nearly as bad as the first one. Um, But I honestly really, really enjoyed the music past the first section of of Hugh Jackman. Sent me whispering. Moderately whispering or mumbling or whatever (laughs) we want to call it. Um, But yeah, I I just, I I really, I have hope for these two programs. I think they go well together. I think they are both very suited to Matteo and his style. So excited to see what happens with them. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to one of our guilty pleasures who lies in the same boat as our passion, I guess, for Alexander Samarin. (laughs) It's Paul Fence. Uh, Paul Fence, the lovely purveyor of the My Outfit Has Pockets meme. Oh, beautiful. I love it. It's so great. And also, we also need to make more women's clothes with pockets, but that's an aside. Oh, forever. Always. All right. So here's short program. Wire to Wire by Razorlight. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, it's Paul Fence. It wasn't like the quad toe wasn't bad at all. The spins were god awful. <laughs> but you know what? He's got solid jump technique. Good for you, Paul. Good job, Paul. <laughs> You've got a lot of jump technique in your pockets. All two of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, his free program was more entertaining, in my opinion. It's I'm Standing Still by Elton John, but from... The movie Rocket Man. It's not actually Rocket Man. It's another song, but I mean, it was just. I, I have three comments. First one is triple sow half loop single flip. The second is he did the wave with his arms in his step sequence. <laughs> and the third one is knee slide. Yeah. Judging by the way that he was performing this program previously, because he is repeating this program from last season, he looked like he was always enjoying himself. Um, He definitely looked like he was enjoying himself in the choreographic sequences. It's a fun program. Yeah. It was all right. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about Alexia Paganini. Alexia Paganini is also another skater that I have a soft spot for. Um, And I am a huge fan of what's happening with her short program. Uh, me too i love it i love the music i love the way that she skates it i love the costume the costume is beautiful 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 i got the exact same thing in my notes absolutely loved it the combo spin looks really great i think she was like a tinsy bit rough in places but it's nothing that time can't fix she's obviously changed coaches to stefan lambiel recently so maybe just adjusting to all of that but I feel like even though she came first in the short, it was a she got sixty three point six zero. Like, is that a bit of a low ball score to you? Yeah, I, I judging by just kind of the way that she skated it, you know, all of her skating skills. I looked at it and I was like, hmm, hmm, interesting. I mean, she was still first, but I was like, hmm, sus. Yeah, a bit sus. She didn't do very well in the free skate, unfortunately. I think that despite all of that, it is. A really promising program yeah it's it just wasn't her day yeah on on one of her combos i saw that when she fell when she got up she took a very long look at her hand so but i didn't see any blood i didn't see any cuts i was just kind of wondering if she had somehow injured it yeah not not a great day for the free skate yeah she was looking at her hand after the short program as well so yeah maybe just a mini injury to that but hopefully it's nothing yeah hopefully it's nothing too serious she obviously had a freak fall on the lutz which she's normally stellar with 
but I will praise her ability to recover and not let her mistakes affect the rest of the program too much. It feels like the mistakes that she made were quite isolated to the jump itself. Yeah, but nonetheless, it was just, yeah, disappointing for her. But can't wait to see what she comes up with next. Yeah, uh, also mildly disappointing. As a side note, uh, right before the replay in the short program, the camera zoomed in on Stefan, who we love, bless <laughs> Stefan, but he pulled his mask down to talk to Alexia as she was skating towards him. Stefan, please keep your mask on. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, they trained together, right? So they've got a, like a little bubble. Nevertheless, Stefan, please keep your mask on. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, you know what? He's doing one. He's doing one better than Evgeny Plushenko. It's true. It's true. It's true. He is. So that kind of wraps up all the athletes that we wanted to cover who competed in the Nebelhorn Trophy. And in this episode, we also wanted to talk about the ISP Points Challenge that was going on over here in the States. Um, and before we start talking about the actual athletes and their programs, we kind of want to explain a little bit about what's actually happening here since, you know, this is. A new thing. So uh, the ISP Points Challenge is a basically a virtual competition that U.S. figure skating is holding. Uh, there are junior and senior skaters. They have two opportunities to compete um, and they will be filming their own programs when they perform them. Um, their best total score is the one that counts in how they rank. The skaters can choose to compete once or twice, so they can either take both opportunities, they can take one or the other. Um, they have to submit videos of their programs, and they're scored by a judging panel. And what this competition is used for is it's a path to qualifying for nationals, which are being held in San Jose, California this year. And the four best skaters or teams from the points challenge who have not yet qualified to nationals will earn buys to nationals in San Jose. Yeah, and I think so far it's been really great to give skaters the opportunity to kind of stimulate a competition vibe. It Nathan did say that it felt more like an exhibition or a champs camp type feel. But, you know, I think they're just excited to have a competitive season no matter what shape, form the competitions come in. Yeah, I, I think it was really interesting because there was like a wide variety of kind of like environments and filming when I was like watching through um, like the quote unquote, I guess like official US figure skating, the ones that were posted like on the US figure skating website. And it was really interesting because in some of the videos, you know, there were many other skaters at the rink that they were filming at and, and you know, performing these programs for the judges. Um, and in some of the other ones, they were kind of just like very sterile. There was literally no one there besides the athlete, the coach, and the person who was filming. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting, just kind of like the variety of everything that was happening in each individual video. Absolutely. And the quality of each and every video, was, there was a drastic difference. Some looked great. Others looked like... They hadn't updated their tech since the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, some of them looked kind of like they were filmed on Motorola razors. But hey, I definitely used to love Motorola razors back in the oh, day. Oh, same here. I was so jealous of my mom who had a Motorola. And I'm like, oh, I'm stuck with my Sony. Yeah, Sony I remember this one phone. girl in math class who sat in front of me. She had a pink Motorola razor. And I was <gasps> like, excuse me, ma'am. I'm just gonna need Damn. to take your phone. <laughs> I still would want a pink Motorola razor. I know that shit's like, cute, right? <laughs> I know. All right, okay. Let's talk about another thing that is hella fucking cute. Mariah Bell. Oh my gosh, I love Mariah Bell. I also love this short program, choreographed by Adam Rapon, our fave. Mm -hmm. I love this short program. I didn't really know what to expect, but. Yeah, I'm vibing it. Yeah, so the short program is uh, To Glitter in the Air by Pink, which is kind of like a slower pop ballad. Yeah, I love this music choice. I'm really, the thing that stood out to me was her skates. I'm really not a fan of the new Adia piano skates. I just don't like like the white heel. It's just not my vibe. I guess I'm a, like a boot traditionalist. I like like seeing the, I, I just affects the aesthetics of the skate and the foot. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Maybe it's an unpopular one, but otherwise. Put it in your bio, hashtag boot traditionalist. I will not put that in my bio, <laughs> but yeah. 
so about the technical elements in her short program that double axle was huge she definitely in my opinion can pull out a triple axle that Lutz was looking all wrong from the beginning though wasn't a great Lutz she did turn around in the free skate what she didn't turn around or out was that toe in her spiral sequence I was like honey you are not Anna Shevakova turn that foot out yeah uh, yes, definitely need some turnout. Uh, the Lutz going into it, I was like, oh, that entry. And then it just went. In her a second opportunity, she pretty much flipped where she fell in her technical content. She did her Lutz right, but she fell on the triple flip, triple toe. And I was just like, oh, Mariah. Oh, no. But I know, I do have to say, I want to raid her training outfits closet because she looks so great in her training outfits. Like the tops look so great. I, I really need to find out where she's got them from yeah I mean I love Mariah I love this choreography I love Adam's choreography in general I think that she has potential for a triple axel I know that like in the U.S. uh, the buzz is all about like who is going to be the next lady to pull out a triple axel right is it Mariah is Brady Amber obviously already has a triple axel we love Amber we'll talk about Amber in a bit but Mm -hmm. yeah I think that Mariah could potentially have a triple axel if she's training it right now yeah I think it if she were to get a triple axel we wouldn't see it until next season when hopefully COVID isn't such a big issue but I don't think there's going to be much technical development this season just because of how COVID's been affecting ice time and everything but I will happily accept Mariah Bell proving me wrong on that front. (laughs) All right, let's move to her free skate. I'm going to default straight to you because you're the huge Mamma Mia fan. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay, so if you guys listen to one of our first episodes, it was either episode zero or episode one. And oh, I think it was episode zero because basically the question was we were talking about like what, yeah, yeah, we were talking about like what music the both of us would skate to if we were to compete this season. And I literally said like someone needs to do Mamma Mia medley. And lo and behold, Mariah Bell was doing an ABBA slash I guess Mamma Mia medley this season. And I was like, Mariah, you stole my music, but not really because I don't skate. So, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but I was like, oh, I'm so curious about what songs she's going to use. Oh, man, I don't even know where to start with this. Um, I think we get four songs. Yeah, there were four, four songs. songs to fit into the long program. That is three and a half minutes. We got Dancing Queen, Winner Takes It All, Mamma Mia, and Thank You for the Music. Now, individually, I love all of them. They're great. However, the music cuts. Oh, my gosh. I think, okay, so I think with this, there are two two different issues okay so one of them is that the cuts were just like kind of odd so we start in the second half of the chorus of dancing queen at the beginning like open and boom you're like right in the middle of the chorus you're like oh my gosh why am i here what have i done and then we're suddenly in the bridge of winner takes it all why is there so little dancing queen and so much winner takes it all also we're then suddenly in the chorus of mamma mia like why are we suddenly here and then there's a jump immediately in like this blank space where Mamma Mia ends and thank you for the music begins. Like I'm just. That's got to be the worst cut out of all of them, I reckon. I'm so confused. And the other issue, the second issue, number one is the cuts. The second issue is that the layout of the program just does not jive with the music. So let me give you an example. So the setup to her jumps, the entry to her jumps, one of them is during like the percussion section of Mamma Mia. And it's just like there. There's just like this marimba or like whatever whatever they're they're clapping together, right? Like it's just like that's where the jump is. Like it's just the layout doesn't match the peaks and valleys of the music. And she also goes straight into a Lutz like when there's a cut between Mamma Mia and Thank You for the Music. Like, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I I just, I don't know. I want to redo this whole program because Mariah deserves better. ABBA deserves better. I'm going to tell you my conspiracy theory, okay? So okay. Shaylin Bourne choreographs this program, okay? Mm-hmm. And in our last episode, we talked about how Danny G from Russia, Danny G of <sighs> Russia, Russian team jacket, 
uh, was saying extremely <laughs> rude things to Shaylin in his interview. So my conspiracy oh theory my God. is that I know where this is going. <laughs> Danny G is moving in on Shaylin after, you know, hearing all these things in his interview, you know, that he wouldn't be working with her on Jenna's free skate. So what he did was he secretly flew to the U.S. before Mariah's ISP Points Challenge filming, and he swapped out the CDs with one of his own ABBA medleys. That's my conspiracy oh my theory. God. He dressed up in his Jasper outfit. He flew to the U.S. and he swapped out the CDs. <laughs> I enjoy this. Com- I enjoy this. I, I feel like it's uh, better than at least 98% of conspiracy theories on the internet. Scientific calculation. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I found. So we all know that Shailen is an extraordinary choreographer. And I think that, yes, this was prob. this was definitely not just probably a, like one of her weaker pieces of work. But OK, let me give you my analysis, because I've thought about this a lot. So obviously the music cuts are really, really bad. However, the choreographic transitions, they're really, really smooth. Shailen does a great job in, you know, stitching everything together and not making it really static. However, the music cuts are static. So it's either like make the cuts smoother and keep the smooth transitions in the choreography. Or if you're really wanting to like, Get, grab an axe and just chop the music up like what was shown then maybe make the choreography more static like maybe that would be a little more palatable because now it just doesn't make sense because there's so many like different components going on not just the music but things just don't seem to fit like we've all gotten used to Danny G taking an axe to his music cuts like having that three piece arc you know when the music's going to change because there's always a stop We've gotten used to that, but I think, ugh, yeah. I mean, it, it just doesn't gel well together. These music cuts make, make Aliana Costanai's short program, like the Billie Eilish one, it makes that cut look great and fine, which it isn't. It's awful. But, yeah. Primarily, though, I'm disappointed that this isn't the Meryl Streep and Piers Brosnan version of Winner Takes It All. <laughs> I feel like that would have added so much more to the program yeah yeah i i think i'm going to stick with my theory that somewhere out there there is an extremely amazing shaylin born medley of abba and this one just belongs to danny g <laughs> this one belongs to daddy <laughs> we don't claim this this is the tiktok with the uh, sparkle daddy. emojis yeah we don't claim this <laughs> <laughs> I really am interested, though, to see what the costume will be for this program. Oh, my gosh. I'm just imagining, like, figure skating reincarnations of various outfits in Mamma Mia. She's got so many ideas to work with and play with. Yeah. I mean, her dresses in the past have been good, so I don't think this will be awful. So I'm hopeful. However, I do want to point out, in Winner Takes It All, there are lyrics that go... The judges will decide, the likes of me abide, spectators of the show, always staying low. And when I heard that, I burst out laughing. Oh no. (laughs) Because, okay, because yes, the judges will decide, but also the spectators of the show, always staying low. And we've been seeing on Instagram in the setup for Skate America, they've had like cardboard cutouts of spectators and put them in, in the seats. I just thought it was a bit ironic. That's all. Oh my gosh, that is that is a very timely lyric, if I do say so. Yeah, but I mean, the second time I watched the program, so when she skated in her second opportunity, I already gave up on how bad the music cuts are. Like, is that the point? Maybe they listened to the music so much that they became numb to how shitty the cuts are. <laughs> like, it's possible, or or my yeah, conspiracy I'm go theory that. is true that that they didn't replace the music from Danny G and then in the second opportunity. You know what? It's no longer a conspiracy theory. It's fact. It's the truth. It's fact. Hashtag facts. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to Brady Tunnell, whose videos looked like they were shot on a camcorder, like those really, really old bulky ones. Yeah. It truly but... looked like it was filmed on a zucchini, <clears throat> but... Uh, on a zucchini <laughs> but uh, who does not record on a zucchini is actually one of my favorite artists Florence and the Machine 
I really love this for Brady, I think. It would, it's just a really good vehicle for her. I dig Florence in the Machine. I also somewhat dig the bling on her leggings. Did you see that kind of like, not, it wasn't chain, but it was kind of, it kind of mimicked the whole chain thing, the whole, I mean, Florence and the Machine isn't like grunge, but kind of like a rocky, a rocker type deal. We appreciate you trying, Brady. We love it. We, we love the new Brady vibes. I think that this program is going to be so good for her. I think that she was definitely trying something new, uh, different from her previous narrative last season, you know, with her bright red costume and kind of more dynamic short program. I think that this is moving in yet another direction. I like it. I, I like where this is going. Uh, previously, you know, I have been a critic of Brady's. She's not exactly my favorite American lady skater, but I really, really think that this is going to be a good direction for her. I have a lot of hope. Oh, me too. Absolutely love the short program music selection. But talking about the free skate, now I want to say we've got another costume situation going on. It's beautiful. It's white. She looks great in it. But the first thing I thought of when I saw it was isn't this costume just a white version of Elizabeth Tersenbaeva's red free skate dress that she wore at 2019 Worlds? It's got the same cutouts, pretty much the same design, just different color. Okay, I think I'm like 99% positive that this is the Cinnamon Paradiso dress that she was wearing last season, uh, closer to the really? end of the season. And I think she might be just like using it for this program, like for this points challenge and this could potentially not be the costume for the rest of the season i'm like 99 percent sure that's happening but don't quote me on that but i yeah i mean i like the dress is nice and i wouldn't mind it if she used it for the rest of the season because i think it suited the music but i was just like i feel like i've seen this design before on someone else anyway the program itself eh what did you think about it i think that if it wasn't filmed on a zucchini we would have uh, a better <laughs> way to judge it but it's not like terrible I think that um the music needs a little more dynamic to it I think it's very sparse oh yeah the music and I think that in mm -hmm. order to pull off something sparse like the the last program where I can remember that had sparse I guess it wasn't even music it was like spoken word uh was uh Gabby and Guillaume's program uh to the spoken word yeah. piece and I think that you need to have a certain energy about you to um have music that is very sparse yeah i think you know i'm such a fan of max richter's music um she was skating to sarajevo by max richter and also dawn of faith by eternal eclipse and it the music though it kind of goes nowhere i mean it's kind of like because dawn of faith gets powerful at the end but maybe it's just that brady doesn't seem to be selling it in any way shape or form or Maybe it's just the videography is so shitty that it doesn't do Brady justice. I guess we'll have to see it Skate America, one or the other. But a lot of this has to do with crowds, I think. Because if you don't have, you know, the energy of the crowd, I get how some people, like especially Mariah Bell, wouldn't have that same energy about it. Like in soccer and the thing about the fans being the 12th man in the team of 11 players, the atmosphere at a competition really adds another dimension to the skater's performance. Like whether or not they're great performers, the energy of the crowd is there. To help or to hinder depends on the person, but I feel like Brady would really benefit and does benefit from that kind of extra energy to help lift her up. Because she's not the most expressive and artistic and performative skater. But, you know, she is definitely trying. Yes, I do agree with that. And I also think that for these music selections where there is kind of not a lot going on and there's kind of some blank space, that audience really helps with like the tension. You know, like it really mm -hmm, yeah. is something else when there's kind of silent bits in the music but there are thousands and thousands of people in the arena and everyone is just like silent you know like everyone's just like you can literally feel the tension so I worry that with a piece like this and no audience that it could have a completely different vibe 
than intended. But I think I like what Brady is going for this season. I think this is another new energy for her. Last season, again, like we saw some new energy with a short program. I think this is yet another direction. Um, and I, yeah, I think that I could be potentially becoming a Brady stan. So hmm. we like it. All right. You may be becoming a Brady stan, but we already know that you're an Amber Glenn stan, just like I am. Such an Amber Glenn stan. And I also really enjoy the short program. Really? Uh, I Yes, I do. <laughs> I love, okay, number one, I love Madeline Bailey. Like, I've been listening to Madeline Bailey for a long time. Yeah, um, same I here. love her covers. I love her voice. And I do like the song. This is like a Papa Roach song, right? So when, like, when she first released, or I guess announced that she was doing this last season, I was like, "Is this Papa Roach? Like, are we going to be hearing <laughs> Papa Roach in, in large figure skating arenas on an international stage?" But it's Madeline Bailey. I love Madeline Bailey, but I think that. Amber really excels when she is able to really just kind of like throw all of her feelings into it without abandon. Yeah. And it usually accompanies these very mournful, morose pop ballads, which is also fine because I love Sad Girl Summer. This is Sad Girl Summer. Folklore just came out, okay? Like, this is very much my energy. And I'm pretty sure that if I competed in figure True. skating, this is the kind of stuff that I would do is skate. That to... would be very, it would be your brand. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely, definitely be skating to these upsetting, unrequited love songs. That's what I would be doing. But I really like this. That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, so my commentary about her short program. Obviously, she did this last year, but I feel like it's a bit of the same same, which, yes, it's kind of contradictory for me to say that, but I feel like I want to see her experiment with music more because we know she's hella strong and she loves skating to those morose ballads, which I also love to listen to. Don't get me wrong. It's just I'd love to see more kind of experimental stuff from Amber. She can, I feel like she could go back to that kind of style in the Olympic season, because that's what she's strong at. But I mean, her free skate's very in like a different light. And I really enjoyed the free skate. Oh my gosh. I, I love I really, the free really skate. that yeah, this would be my preferred program out of the two. The choreo by Misha Gee was great. I think it's just such a solid free skate. I love it. She looks great for this point in the season. I'm a fan. Gosh, all the skating at the Galleria next to the family drinking Orange Julius has paid <laughs> off. And I mean that seriously. Like, Oh, I don't disagree. She is just like in such good competitive shape. And I don't mean her body. I mean like her skating. She looks seasoned. She looks like she's in it. She's looks, she looks like she's been competing all season. And this is kind of like it. And um, I think this new program is, again, like a new direction for her. Um, of course, this was arranged by Misha. I was like listening to it and I was like, wow, this is like really intense. I love the choreo. I looked. Yeah, of course, it's Misha. It's, it's very Misha, but I love it. I think it works very, very well. I think if I had to nitpick, I'd say I'd like her spins to be faster. But, you know, that's just me nitpicking. She looks great. Her jumps look great. She looks so strong. Can't wait to see it at Skate America. Yeah. And I think compared to Mariah's free skate, um, you know, just from like a choreographic standpoint and, and the program layout standpoint is the way that the music builds, the positioning of all the elements and the spins. I think it's just so on point when we compare the layout of the program versus the layout of the music. Oh, absolutely. And Mariah's is just not matchy matchy. Um, but this is just such yeah. a good example of like when the music, the skater and the choreography and the program elements go so well together. I love it. This is like Absolutely. one of my favorite programs that I saw in the ISP Points Challenge. I agree with you. It's such, such a s solid program and it's going to throw a spanner in the works for a lot of people. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Karen Chen. Her short program is to Rise by Katy Perry. We got a stock standard Karen Chen type dress. This program didn't do much for me, even though I like the song quite a lot. Like the only thought I came up with, or I actually had two. The first one was, I'll never get tired of Karen's double axel. It's great. The second one was, if this was Tiffany Zagorski skating to Rise by Katy Perry, we'd at least see some lip syncing. Lip <laughs> syncing. <laughs> but you know, we appreciate someone who still does a held spiral in their program. Joss, what do you think? 
Yeah, I I think this is kind of similar to her show program last year, which was to You Say. Um, It's kind of like this, again, kind of like a pop ballad, but in a very different sense than Amber. Like, I feel very different emotionally when I watch Karen Chen's programs to pop ballads versus Amber's programs to pop ballads. They just kind of have a very different feel to them. Um, This is very kind of like classic Karen Chen short program. Uh, It was really interesting because on Instagram, she posted the other day that she posted this video and I was like, Karen, don't be so down on yourself. You're great. But basically her caption was like, oh, I'm sorry for being such a slow tater, which was like a slow rotator. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Karen, stop. Be nice to yourself. It's the beginning yeah. of the season. Take it easy, please. I mean, when she when she does all of her jumps, the slow tation looks fucking fantastic. It looks yeah, great. Yeah, it looks great. I was like, Karen, come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does impact on her consistency and ability to get those rotations around, but her jumps are massive in terms of height. Yes, she could snap in quicker, but it's very old school, like Dick Button era type jumps. And we need some of that. We we like that uniqueness of her jumps. So don't be so hard on yourself, Karen. Yeah, come but on, Karen. I'm, I'm going to be hard on her free skate because it's to Butterfly Lover's Violin Concerto. Okay, I'm not going to be too hard. I have two notes. One was that double axle triple toe fire great loved it and then my second note is i zoned out afterwards yeah sorry karen i do like this music i think that again as they work on the program throughout the season definitely kind of working on the layout of the program versus kind of where the music is i feel like that is the theme of this episode but i look forward to it yeah. i really really enjoy this music i think it's very relaxing it's very Me zen. Too. it's very similar to her program that she did to on golden pond it is kind of that same tempo it's the same energy it's but i i really yeah, I really like this on her. It's like, very she has a brand. She's a very kind of like classical, more old school skater, slower rotation. I don't mind it. I think that, you know, I think that she's finding her footing after coming back. And I, I think, Karen, please don't be so mean to yourself. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Don't be so mean yeah. to yourself. Like, I love Butterfly Lovers. I have a soft spot for it. I feel like it's... It was a war horse kind of in the, let's say, 90s, early 2000s, but we haven't heard it in a long time. And yeah, I like the music. I'm just sorry for zoning out afterwards. Maybe the program will get better, hopefully. Okay, so let's talk about Gracie Gold. Oh my gosh, her jumps are coming back. Her spins look beautiful. I know. I love it. And she is uh, skating to Survivor. We love it. I I love where this is going. I have so much Me hope too. and faith in Gracie Gold right now. Jeremy Abbott did a great job on the choreography. Her jumps look so solid. They look great. Obviously, you know, a lot of the jump issues come down to conditioning and building back her fitness. But that's just, that takes time. But she looks great. Yeah. I'm really, really proud of her. It just like the programs just need to be trained more. That that's all. That double axle is just mwah, chef's kiss. Short program is I love it. Absolutely love it. Free skate is to War in My Mind by Beth Hart. And the overall structure of everything looks fine. She didn't do like technically she wasn't super great in the free, but everything else looks fine. The spins look great. Gracie just needs more like time to come back and I'm with her every step of the way because she looks fantastic. Both these programs look so great this season. I was honestly hoping that she would keep Waitress for another season. <gasps> Me I too. Love Waitress Me too. So much. Okay. And one of my friends. She could do it for her exhibition. Yeah. She could. Okay. That's such a good idea. Gracie, if you're listening to our podcast, yeah. please include the Waitress program in your exhibition because it's amazing. We need to see it. We didn't get to see it last no, season. No, we need to see it more. Uh, but I just, I love Waitress. Uh, one of my friends, she was actually able to see Waitress with Sarah Bareilles in Waitress. And I was like, shut up. Go away. I refuse to acknowledge that you were able to do this. Oh, and I'm so I was jealous. Not. Waitress is actually coming to Sydney. It was supposed to come to Sydney in 2021, but let's see when it oh, actually stop. comes. But I'm so excited. I love Waitress too. Okay, let's go back and talk about skating. Let's talk about Star Andrews. Now... For some reason, she did compete in ISP Points Challenge, but 
we cannot find any videos of her performance. Not even on like the US, um, USFS, like, is it the fan zone site where all of the videos are supposed to be listed? They're just none, nothing on YouTube. And I'm mad because I was really excited for her programs. Yeah, I, I don't know why this didn't happen. Uh, US figure skating, hello, uh, <laughs> you have us to answer to. And also other people who love Star because who doesn't, right? She's amazing. Yeah. But, and also like the videos that are on the US figure skating fan zone or whatever that they're available on, they're not available for a lot of viewers outside of the States. We just want to make it clear that I think things should be really accessible this season, especially with COVID. Like, we just need a way to incorporate the folks at home because obviously we can't travel. So I hope that in the future, when stuff like this happens, number one, all the skaters will be shown and number two, people will be able to access it around the world. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like, hello from Australia where we barely get anything. Uh, But Star's going to be competing in Skate America, and obviously that will be televised, so I'm excited for that. However, we did go back and watch the On Ice Perspectives video of her short program, which is to Black Like Me and I Stan. This program is so fire. I mean, obviously, because it's on Ice Perspectives, it was shot so well. So if it was, if that was her submission to the Ice P Points Challenge, shout out to Jordan Cohen. Who doesn't film on a zucchini? Oh, definitely. Have you seen that rig? Definitely not a zucchini. I absolutely love this program. But you can tell that she is trying so hard not to lip sync. It's, I mean, it's such a great song. I want to lip sync. I mean, I was singing oh, yeah. at home on my computer, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this program was choreographed by Derek Delmore, and at the beginning of the video shot by On Ice Perspectives, Star says the following quote, It honors the struggle that African Americans have and are still enduring. And I guess, especially this season, it's so important to listen to the lyrics of this song, which is by Mickey Guyton, and to note that figure skating is a sport that has an overwhelming dearth of black skaters. Um, And like Mickey Guyton, if you guys don't know who that is, uh, she's a black country singer. Um, That's also a community in which there are very few well-known black names. So we just wanted to take this time to uplift black competitive skaters and just encourage everyone to please keep skating. There are people like Star Andrews out there who do amazing, amazing things. And yeah, we just love this program in so many different ways. Absolutely. And that ending pose just really puts a stamp on it and says it all. The program is so great. I can't wait for her to show it at like an actual competition and have all these little girls and little boys see it, like actually see it and really like look up to her. I mean, they already do, but yeah, we love you, Star. Yes. And also for US Figure Skating to actually air the program on their website, please. Yeah. <laughs> Acknowledge Star oh. Andrews. We love Star Andrews. Someone else we also love, and I have prepared a very long rant for, is Alyssa Liu. Now. Oh my goodness. Where do we start? Where do we start? Actually, I'm going to let you start because. <laughs> I've got a lot to say. Okay, so we all know that Alyssa has switched coaches for this season. So her short program is to La Strada, and it's choreographed by Lori Nickel. I think that at this point in the season, I think it was a pretty solid attempt. I think the jumps looked okay. I think it was pretty much like on par with other folks who kind of had the same amount of ice time, the same amount of time with the choreography this season. Um, I do have faith in Lori Nickel and the choreography. Um, And I also am not a huge fan of the pink dress. But I mean, obviously, like, we don't even know if this is going to be the costume, right? It could be an old costume. Who really knows? But yeah, yeah, I think it's a pretty solid short program. I have have no complaints about it. Neither do I. I said, like, in my notes, I said, I think Lori did a great job with making this short um, into a great vehicle for Alyssa. I also noted that she should ditch the hot pink dress and gloves. Because I don't think that helps with her package, in my personal opinion. She looks really cute in it. But, you know, La Strada, I don't really picture, you know, hot pink. But the whole the whole thing really was very Tara Lipinski-esque. And I was just like, oh, I really hope Alyssa gets, you know, great guidance and lasts longer than Tara. And doesn't, like, overtrain and all that stuff and get injuries. Okay, short program done. Yeah. The free skate is to The Storm, 
which is also choreographed by Laurie Nichol. And okay, so the jumps look solid. I can see improvements in her artistry, performance, edge quality and maturity, but she is very slow across the ice. And I mean that in comparison with other skaters at her level. Like there are plenty, I've seen skaters that when I was competing who are younger than her, are lower levels than her, but skate at the same speed. And I feel like she can skate faster, but that's just been what she's used to. Like she skates very, very, very slow into her jumps, kind of like Eleni Rajonova going into her double axle. It's like very, very slow. And obviously picking up speed will somewhat come with age as her body develops and gets more power. And I feel like she knows that she needs to work on this. She's 15. She's very young. She has time. Huh. And with that, I guess it's time for my rant. Y'all, Alyssa Liu is 15 years old. She was born in 2005. Everyone, all those adults who are keyboard warriors, take a look in the goddamn mirror before you type out hate or unconstructive criticism. Also, do not under any circumstances post shallow comments about how her body looks online. Like online, a place where a 15-year-old girl in this day and age has unfettered access to. Like, have we not learned anything from recent news and awareness brought to light from all sports, like especially gymnastics? Do we not remember what happened to Gracie Gold and what she's trying to speak out against? Like, just stop. Fucking hell, the, the poor girl had to quit social media. Like, are you guys proud of this outcome? Like, if you are, then you have a sad, sad life. Yes, over the break and due to COVID, her body developed. She is a teenage girl. This shit happens to everybody. However, there is a big difference between commenting publicly, I might add. There's a big difference between commenting on how someone's body, especially a teenage girl's body, looks and your perception of that person's weight versus commenting on how their body type functions. There's a difference. It is our responsibility, that is people who are alive today, to stop like nodding and agreeing silently about how sports culture should change. And we should be actively participating in shifting everyone away from a toxic and damaging culture. Like the shift is going to be heavy. It's not going to happen overnight. And it's going, it's going to require a lot of people to help it in that direction. Like don't sit back and think that any effort you, you know, you would make won't be impactful enough. So you like think, oh, I'll leave others who have more power to do something. Like, no, this is just like voting. And on a side note, everyone in the US go and actually fucking vote. I was going to say like treat it as a good excuse to get out of the house. But Americans in general aren't really paying attention to lockdowns anyway. Anyway, just just play your part. Actually speak up. This just needs to stop. Like we've talked about it for so long. There's no use in brushing it under the rug anymore. Now, there was a comment left on the video of Alyssa's short program that she skated to at Carnival on Ice that was something I really resonated with. This is from the Go Go Booty. <laughs> what, a, what a name. And it says this. Her weight is not the problem here. She looks very similar in build to the Japanese skaters. The problem is that she is severely lacking in speed. When Kostanaya went through early puberty, her saving grace is that she could skate fast enough to get the momentum she needed in order to get the rotations done. What we're seeing here is what happens when you focus on the jumps instead of the skating. The jumps won't see you through the hard times. I think this is a really, really great take on it all. And just people, get out of your cold world mindsets. This is a young, young girl who obviously has incredible potential and people got excited that the US had someone who could potentially go toe to toe with the Russian wonder kids. Sure thing, I, I think she's absolutely great, I agree. But don't forget that she's a real person who has been just thrust into the spotlight, vulnerable, unprotected really. There's not really a system or you know, structure around her to protect her. Like, there have been countless ladies preceding her who have been chucked into a similar situation. I'm going to name names. We've got Caroline Zhang, Mariah Nagasu, Tara Lipinski. We've got Gracie Gold. And even, even the Russians, 
like in particular Yulia Lipnitskaya. There was so much media attention on her. Obviously, we know the Russians do a lot of things to keep their weight down, and all of them, all of them, I will say all of them, are really unhealthy. Now, the perception that smaller, skinnier, thinner, and lighter is better and will win more medals, stop that perception. Just stop. It has always been about optimizing your power to weight ratio. The ratio. Like, look at people like Simone Biles, Ali Raisman, Jordan Weber, Laurie Hernandez, Midori Ito, Tonya Harding. We've got Wakaba Higuchi, Kaigori Sakamoto, like even Caitlin Osmond. And like in no way, shape or form are any of these ladies fat or heavy and just they're none of that thing. Like just ugh, like the power that they have in their sport is unparalleled and that's why they are and were so successful like just ah so my message is essentially go get fucking educated and if you don't have anything nice to say fucking shut up and don't say it at all okay that's me done thank you for coming to my ted talk protect Alyssa. yeah i mean obviously claudia said everything very succinctly and appropriately i think that it is just such a shame that this 15 year old girl had to like literally turn off her social media and not only did she have to turn off her social media she did it because random adults on the internet were pitting her and comparing her to russian girls basically the same age or slightly older to her and critiquing her body size and natural teenage development it's gross if you're gonna do this just think about how harmful you're being and stop i was originally gonna say like think about if you had a daughter or a friend or someone that you know who was experiencing this but like you don't need to have someone that you know that's going through this in order to not be cruel to a young girl like stop don't don't be a shithead yeah pretty much don't be a shithead okay let's move on let's move on to men shall we yeah let's move on to men i think that it was a very very good showing from both nathan and jason why don't we start with nathan Did th- did mm-hmm. he even have an off season? Like, did he take no, his time he off between March and now? Like, I don't see it, which is amazing. So his short program, his short program is to Desperado. I think it has shades of this kind of energy of the opening shimmy of Caravan. I love the opening shimmy of Caravan. It's my favorite, okay? There's just like this energy that he has. It brings me immense amounts of glee. I really, it's, okay, I, I will have to say this is not like my favoriteest short program of his, but I really like it. I think that... We're going to talk about the free skin in a second, but but I really, really like it. I think his jumps look great. It, it looks like he has not taken any time off, and I'm just shocked. And I think that's all down to his technique being, like, rock solid. He knows exactly what to do, how to train. Ruff has, you know, brought him up really, really well. He has that discipline. I love this short program. Shailen did a wonderful job. 10 out of 10. Nathan's doing Nathan. It's a vibe. That's all I have to say, really. Uh, Moving on to a score that's not 10 out of 10, but it's actually like 250,000 out of 10 is this Philip Glass free skate. (laughs) Can we just talk about this Philip Glass medley going on here? Because I love this shit. It's so good. So I'm internally screaming. Someone is finally doing Philip Glass. Just uh, like especially the theme from the movie The Hours, which is the metamorphosis part of his free skate music. Just, it has been my favorite for so long. It's like, it's, um, I, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I am so fucking psyched that he's skating to this. Again, technical content, all of that stuff. Nathan's doing Nathan. The only thing I could probably nitpick is, you know, spins could be faster, but like with everything, it's still early in the season and spins are something that, you know, really get better with practice and time, which is obviously more of a luxury this season. But I'm just in love because I love Philip Glass. I think that especially with this free skate, people are always harping on Nathan for, you know, like he always says that he has ballet training. Where is his ballet training? Why is he doing hip hop? Like, why is he pointing at the audience? Because he likes it. Okay, number one. But, (laughs) but, But I think that with this free skate especially, we can really tell that he has had 
ballet training, just his arm positions. Oh, yeah. I think just in, in his lines, I think that it really kind of shows here. And it's just kind of like a middle finger to, to those who have critiqued him for not for talking about the ballet training, but not actually showing it. Oh, this absolutely. Good on you, Shailen. <clears throat> Applaud it's all round. Why couldn't you do the same for Mariah Bell? We love um, <laughs> Yes. Another skater who pretty much I had the same comments for because it was just like a million love hearts and then 10 out of 10 is Jason Brown. Who also apparently had no off season at all because he looks in tip top shape. I know. He looks so great. So his short program is to Cinnamon. His free skate is to Slaughter on 10th Avenue. He announced that on Instagram with like little clips of it. Everyone pretty much died in unison because it's just very Jason. It's so Jason and it's so good. Both programs suit him so well. The choreography is so great. Uh, I don't really have much more to say, really. Oh my gosh, I'm going to keep talking about this throughout literally the entire time that our podcast is alive. But last year, I went to Skate America with my friend Melanie, and I got to <laughs> really? see... Really? Yes. You haven't mentioned it before. Oh my gosh, do I never talk about this? Um, but last year, I got to go to Skate America, and I got to see Jason Brown live in person. And this was the first time I'd ever so seen jealous. Jason live in person. And in person, like his edges are really that deep. His speed across the ice is really that fast. And also, I got to uh, briefly talk to him, and he is truly the ray of sunshine that everyone says he is. Like, when I told him that I had to go because I had dinner plans with my friend, he looked as though it was the most heartbreaking news he had ever received. Like, I told him that I was actually the person who had stolen his puppy away from him 17 years ago. I mean, I didn't, and he, who knows if that's actually in his narrative, right? But he's just such, like, a ray of sunshine, and... I truly love these programs from him. Also another person who does not appear to have had an off season. Also, there was this surprise triple flip in the choreo. And I was like, oh, oh, hi. (laughs) Very, very Joshua Farris-esque. And I'm here for it. I love Joshua Farris. I know, me too. (laughs) Although, can we please mention in in his free skate, did you see that triple toe placeholder for a quad toe? Oh, shit. He coming. Oh, shit. If this is the season, Jason finally pulls out a consistent rotated quad toe. Oh, boy. So excited. Oh, boy. Yeah, I I think that, you know, when we went to Skate America, I think there were just so many people that were just like genuinely just had been following Jason's career for a long time. And I think that when, when he lands a quad consistently, everyone is just going to be overjoyed as I think will he and Brian and Tracy. Oh my God. It's so wholesome, isn't it? So, so wholesome. I can't wait to it. see this their showing and need. costumes, both Nathan and Jason at Skate America. Oh, just 10 out of 10. I love their content for this season. So good. Love it. All right, let's discuss pairs, namely two pairs, Alexa Kneerim and Brennan Fraser and Jessica Cowell-Lang and Brian Johnson. This is big. This is big. It was the debut of Alexa and Brandon. What did you think, Joss? Oh, my gosh. Okay. First of all, I see so much potential. Like, I've always Mm -hmm. enjoyed Alexa as, like, an individual. I I think, like, in my personal opinion, I think Alexa and Chris's relationship kind of at at times kind of got in the way of their skating partnership. Um, But I'm happy that now she's paired with Brandon. I love the free skate, okay? I love everything about it. I love this cover of the song. I adore the costume that Alexa is wearing. Like, this red dress. Yes. Brandon looks great as well. The costumes are big, yes. Yeah, and I think that, like, the, what I wrote down was, like, Brandon's costume with the simple black shirt with the kind of, like, red type, like, half to three-quarter sleeve. I think oh, this is how yeah. you do, like, a simple costume well, you know? A simple yeah. costume that matches his partner's costume, but it's so – I just love it. Like, I literally love everything about the free skate. Um, I think that Brandon and Alexa, it feels like they are potentially at – 
a middle school dance at a Catholic school where they're leaving room for the Holy Spirit between them. Like they, they seem like they are two kids being asked to demonstrate the dance in PE class and they kind of don't necessarily know each other. But like I get it. I understand. They've only been skating yeah. together for like three or four months. I But so much potential. I love it. I was literally like squeeing at my computer screen. It's very, very exciting uh, that they are being paired this season. The free skate is just exciting. Exquisite. And I think that when it is performed to its fullest, I think that it can really be a big showstopper. Absolutely. They've got a great base to work off from. They're looking so strong already. And that's really a testament to, you know, their skating and progress with their previous partners. They obviously still got to iron out some new partner stuff. It, that's pretty obvious. And just working on synchronicity, closeness and that connection. But the foundations are there. It's solid. Both programs are great. I really enjoy the short as well. Just really great showing from them. Re- really, really promising. However, however, in comparison to Jessica and Brian, we have a competition on our hands because Jessica and Brian have been playing the big underdog energy card and they are creeping up on everyone. I noticed in their programs the speed, the power, the kind of consistency, even though like there are wonky throws and Jessica just, just, I don't even know how she does it, but she manages to, she manages to land them. Like whatever position she's put in, she lands it and she's, she keeps everything off the ice. The short program is to Light of the Seven from Game of Thrones. They kept it from last season. And it's such a strong program, so I get why they chose to keep it. You know, I think the difference between Brandon and Alexa at this point in time, right, like as we're recording this podcast and Brian and Jessica, is that, you know, I how uh, (laughs) in figure skating fandom, there's a big focus on how Tessa and Scott, before each program, they would like sync their breathing with each other (laughs) and just kind of like take a moment with each other. I think that Brian and Jessica very much have that energy. But Brandon and Alexa don't quite have that energy. Yeah. Like it it just doesn't quite have that synchronicity mm-hmm. at this point in time. I think that they will get there though. I really do hope and think that they will get there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But for this season, that is Jessica and Brian's edge is that their partnership is a longer one. So it's going to be very interesting to see how everything plays out. And we finally get some drama and competition in U.S. Pairs. I love it. (laughs) Didn't think I'd be saying that one. Yeah, I think U.S. Pairs has been waiting for this for a long time. I think it started during uh, Brian and Jessica's great performance at Nationals last year. It was just Mm -hmm. kind of like a standout moment for them. I think it's so unfortunate kind of the way that everything shook out with Worlds. The first starting off with the selection and... uh, Obviously, now having worlds being canceled, right? Um, But I think that, you know, just looking at how their programs went here at the ISB Points Challenge, I think that it could just continue for them. And that's what I'm hoping for them because I think that they're just like such like a likable pair. Like I've been rooting for them for a long time. Like we were saying, they're kind of underdogs. And Brian specifically kind of has this energy that is a combination between like Freddy and Shaggy from Scooby-Doo like he kind of just has this like uh, mystery machine Scooby snack handing out kind of energy and I mean that in the best way possible because I love Um, (laughs) Scooby-Doo but he just has that energy like I just really enjoy them and I want them to be extremely successful this season and I hope that for them absolutely I agree so their free skate is to who wants to live forever by Queen now first things first about the costumes I personally don't think I like this costume for Jessica. I it Wait, what? Yeah. What? I know. It was a bit of a strange one for me. I feel like it's it looked to me more like an ice dance costume. Maybe I'm just not a fan of the colors together. However, I am so here for Brian's costume. That single blue arm, that really like subtle blue arm that kind of goes over the back of his shoulder. I love it. Oh yeah. I love it so yeah. much. And you know what? Maybe the maybe the costume will grow on me. I love Jessica. I just think that yeah, it's not my favorite color combination. But that's a personal that's a personal thing. But the music, you know those like big Olympic moments in your free skate or like moments at nationals where you've skated your skated lights out, right? 
I can see that happening. Like the music buildup is just so powerful. The choreography is there. Their skating is powerful enough that it can be a real goosebumpy moment. I can see that for them and I really want that to happen for them. Obviously, COVID just means that there's going to be no crowd, which kind of sucks because the crowd adds so much to that moment, quote unquote. But yeah, they're just so strong. They looked so great here. I really, really hope they have an awesome season. I love them in every way possible. I, I also truly hope they have an amazing season. Oh, fingers crossed for them. I think I, I think out of all the people that we've talked about, they were super, super just kind of let down by the whole situation, right? Like I was talking yeah. about starting from Worlds to Worlds being canceled to the momentum that they had. I was like, come on, Jessica and Brian need their moment. But I'm hoping and praying that their moment happens this season as well. Okay, let's move into our kiss and cry segment. Woohoo! Okay. We're going to start off with our book recommendation for this episode. Just take it away. Cool. So the book that I'm going to recommend this episode is called A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. Uh, So like Star Andrew's program to Black Like Me, in this section of our podcast, we wanted to make a concerted effort to highlight amazing novels in genres that have seen a lack of published books by and about Black folks. So today I'm going to recommend actually one of my favorite books. It's called, again, A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. It's an adult romance book. Uh, It's the first book in the Reluctant Royals series. And it's an adult romance book that is the first book in the Reluctant Royal series. And our protagonist, Naledi Smith, she is in grad school. She's juggling a lot of things. So the people in her program that are discriminating against her, her job in catering. And the third thing is being constantly sent emails that she is betrothed to a Nigerian prince. She's like, oh my God, this is so much spam. However, we also have a prince that actually exists. His name is Prince Tabiso. He ever so dutifully is looking for love, and more specifically, he is looking for the woman that he is betrothed to, who is, of course, Naledi. They bump into each other one day randomly on a catering job, and they begin to fall in love. But the catch in this book is that Prince Tabiso pretends to be a non-royal like commoner, if you will. Uh, The book is not only romantic and so much fun, but it is actually hilarious. I laughed out loud multiple times, and like Claudia knows very well, (laughs) I am a hard sell when it comes to humor. I hate comedy movies. I don't think they're funny at all, but I think this book is hilarious. It is the perfect escapist read for this hot dumpster fire of a year, as well as every single one of the books in this series. There are quite a few of them. Please go read this book. It is so, so good. It is called A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole is such a great writer. Her books are always so much fun. So yes, definitely pick this up. It will be a great beach read or definitely a great COVID read when you need to pick me up. Yes. And if you are not into contemporary romance, Alyssa Cole also writes historical romance. And she has actually just come out with a thriller uh, that focuses on topics such as the gentrification of neighborhoods um, and how that plays into this particular mystery that, you know, is the center of the story. And If, you know, again, if you don't like contemporary romance, she has a lot of books that are so, so good in her repertoire. Go, Alyssa Cole. (laughs) Woohoo! All right. The next part of our Kiss and Cry, we're going to talk about Lisa Tuktamishiva's merch drop. On Instagram, it's at empress underscore where underscore by underscore tuktik. That is T-U-K-T-I-K. Okay. What do you think about this merch drop? I actually enjoy it a lot more than Jenya's merch. Jenya's merch is literally uh, various pieces of clothing that are control you Evgenia Medvedeva. <laughs> and while I really enjoy Evgenia Medvedeva and I hot take do believe we should have won the Olympics. But anyways, that's a different story. I do not want her name just kind of like on my clothing willy nilly front and center. <laughs> I would appreciate something like a sketch of hers. Uh, I know she has beautiful art. Yeah, she has great art. 
I just don't really want to wear clothing with someone else's name emblazoned front and center on it, right? But like Lisa's huge. merch, yeah. yeah, like like really large. Uh, but Lisa's merch is different. It's got kind of like a small version of her logo, which is kind of like an amalgamation of the letters E and W for Empress Wear. Um, it seems to be like in very wearable and versatile colors, like neutrals. And red, a little bit of red for her logo. I like it. I'm also a big fan of subtle merch. Like, I don't want to be parading your name and face on my stomach and chest down the street. Like, I want to support you, but I'm also a fan of doing it, like, subtly. Because, you know, otherwise everything, all of your merch is going to end up as my sleepwear. Yeah, and also, like, in some workplaces, you're not allowed to, like, wear things with logos, but you are allowed to wear things yeah. that just have, like, a little tiny thing on it. So I think just in to, to make your pieces more versatile, not you, you as in, like, the royal you, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are definitely ways to make personalized merch, but to have it be more versatile so people can wear it in different places. Uh, for example, if someone is cold in the rink. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, there are ways to not have like 400 people with control you of Genya Mivejeva <laughs> oh. merchandise. <laughs> yeah, like I'd love it if there was, if she ha came out with like a logo and she stamped it on the, you know how like the Lululemon logo is like, it's there, but it's subtle. Yeah. Like, and like yeah. oh, yeah. girl sporting totally. that kind of headband would be so freaking cute. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 100%. anyway, these are their first drops. I'm sure they will improve. Both of them have great style. Genya has great art. And, you know, they're young. I keep forgetting how young they are. Truly. Truly. Okay, the last item in our Kiss and Cry is Johnny Weir getting saved on Dancing with the Stars. Joss. Okay, first of all, I don't think he should have been in the bottom. <laughs> that that's my first point is that I really just don't think he should have been in the bottom at all so uh when you guys are listening to this hopefully Johnny will still be on the show and you should use all 10 20 30 40 however many votes you have between your devices you should use them all to vote for him and keep him out of the bottom please not sponsored by Johnny Weir just really enjoy him and his dancing <laughs> um but oh come on like who wouldn't want to keep that kind of sass on air I, I love him and I think that kind of the issues that the judges had with him this week was that he and Brit performed a salsa. And yes, his movements were kind of a little more balletic and airy. It was very much lifted as opposed to salsa movements, which is very grounded, especially like in the hip and lower body yeah. region. However, there were definitely performances that were worse than his that week, technically, and also just kind of like visually and entertaining wise. So we all know how these work, though. It's never about the technicality. It's all about popular. Popularity. And I don't get why Johnny Weir isn't more popular. Like, could you get any more drama? I love... Do you want any more drama? I just really enjoy him. And I think that he is... I see, like, on his face week to week that he's, like, frustrated with how he's being scored and okay. how, especially, like, people who don't have performances that are quite as great as his kind of being scored the same or higher than him. Uh, just oh, due definitely. to... I mean, it's very obvious kind of on Dancing with the Stars who the favorites are, but... I just really encourage everyone to go vote for Johnny. We love him. He's doing great. And, and also just kind of this season, I think Britt, who he's partnered with, is doing a really good job of uh, respecting where he wants to go with gender nonconformity, especially in ballroom, which has very strict and yeah. rigid kind of ways that they want people of certain genders to act and portray themselves in their dances. I think that he is really bringing a fresh light in from everything to his movement, to his costumes, to the way that the choreography is designed. So I just wanted to also give a shout out to Brit for kind of helping him and guiding him with choreo that is really suited for him and his style. Absolutely. And she's doing, this is her first season as a pro and she is, she is hitting it out of the park. She's doing so well. So yay, Brit and Johnny. Go vote, please. All your votes for Johnny. Just go vote in general. Vote everywhere. Vote everywhere. Like, you've got the election coming up. You've got Johnny Weir coming up. Like just vote. Just vote. Wherever you can, just vote. Voting, Voting is great. So that's pretty much it for the episode. I'm Joss, and you can come and chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod, L U T Z, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at letsgetdownpod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and want to wrap a little you in cotton wool and protect her, please visit wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a cheeky five stars. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all, for listening. All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.